consideration that you um, did organize this conference. This is the, he, he has been the Minister of Health in Latvia. Peter Sappings. And also Vice President of Sports Federation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fogelis, Mr. Sask, Mr. Severs, Mr. Wasnex. Dear viewers, uh, thank you. It was I was surprised to hear uh, all the professions I have been through. I'm um, I'm first of the seven speakers today, but three of us are, for, are from Latvian Medical Association. I'm, I'm wondering what are we going to tell you. So. At the beginning, I would like to define that children's sport means begin early, specialize later, and maintain the joy of active lifestyle and health provided by the sport throughout lifetime, and engage in sports that promote cognitive competences. One-fifth of all the kids in Latvia are overweight, or they have obesity, and that's the reality in today's situation. Last two days, we have had the biggest crisis of refugees in Europe since World War II, with the highest probability that in the near future, Europe will receive four to six million refugees. We have heard different numbers, but today I will mention the worst numbers. Well, anyway, right now in Europe, we have about over uh, over 700 million inhabitants, but there are more than 1 billion inhabitants in Africa and almost the same amount in uh, Middle and uh, Middle East, and all of them want to migrate to Europe. Well, Latvia within a year may have to have 2,000 to 8,000 refugees, and. I, I have chosen um, I have chosen the uh, number I have heard most in media. It's like six thousand. Well, based on different um, data, thirty till forty five percent of refugees are children or minors, although they might look like they're adults, but actually they are fourteen years old. They are very uh, they, they are ready to, uh, to, to flee from their country, but actually they're children. So the very, um, uh, very important question will be children integrity. So um, I, I, I think you also would be interested in how it's going to happen. How can we integrate 2,000 kids in our society? Not only history, but also joy of life. We know that refugees are subject to unhealthy lifestyle all over the world because they have lower availability of health services, because we cannot communicate with them. We need trans uh, translators and interpreters to communicate with them. And me, as a doctor, I think that um, our health services have all kinds of traditions. For example, uh, in Ukraine, there were two uh, polyamylate uh, cases in Ukraine, and it's um, like kids' stroke. And we remember that um, we had people amongst us with a uh, numb he a hand or numb uh, leg, and this sickness is coming back to Europe. And last year in Afghanistan, there have been 34 cases in Ukraine. Um, it's, um, it's not so violent. But all in all, all kids all, uh, who are refugees, they are very different because they eat very unhealthy and they are more keen of computer games and gambling. And let's try to remember that in 1993, when we came to uh, uh, part, uh, when we became part of New Europe, um, we all ran to McDonald's, and last week when we opened Kentucky Fried Chicken in, Amer uh, in Riga, a lot of people went there. Um, there is 
such a thing as a so, uh, as social determinants. Um, it's what's necessary for um, long and uh, and good life. So um, education, wealth, and active lifestyle and sport throughout lifetime have the highest correlation with a long and healthy life. And usually I, I lecture on smoking and using alcohol, but uh, the most important thing in life uh, uh, is education because all over the world people with highest education work, uh, live longer than pe uh, p people without uh, highest education. Good education all over the world also means sports and active lifestyle. The world has not invented a better integration of children uh, as joint sports activities. I, I, I had a look at the situation in Sweden and Finland and how to involve the refugee kids in normal social life. And the first answer is they have to be in sports, in team sports. I asked why. Uh, I, I, I like individual sports, but they said it would be very difficult to send a kid from um, Iraq in uh, orienting uh, games in our forests because they will get lost and, and they won't understand the map. So the best thing what we can offer to our kids, uh, to those refugees' kids, are uh, team sports. Sports much more than a variety of group activities and learning in a classroom setting uh, develop cognitive and communication abilities. Group sports are always fun and enjoyable and team sports highly develops leadership skills. So far, the largest refugee flow has been uh, to, uh, to South Africa, not to Europe, because people who uh, live in the middle Africa, um, they all had a dream to go to South Africa because it's quite a um, wealthy country. They have diamonds there and they're quite uh, developed. They have ra rugby there. It's a sports game. And South Africans said, you know what we can do? We can involve them in rugby games. And I asked Ivar Spilnis, he might be here. He plays rugby. He's a very big man. It turns out that the basic uh, thing is that, that, uh, that not very fit kid, uh, he's a bit overweight. And if we send him or her to, to play volleyball or handball, they feel uh, uh, not involved with uh, those who can jump high, run fast, he will quit in two days. But in rugby, he's the one of those who are push pushing uh, the other players. He, he's, uh, oh, you're here. You're our rugby daddy. So in that rugby game, they, they make uh, them fit. And the most important thing is that you have uh, uh, to to make fit back and uh, uh, your whole body and rugby is very good for that. So South Africans have made uh, rugby as a part of integrating kids uh, into society. So so those refugee kids usually eat white bread, play computer games, and not move very much. So. Sport develops communicative abilities. Sports uh, activities are excellent for foreign language training so that uh, those refugees could integrate in the society and so that society accepts refugees. In Europe, we can see that in playing football. We know that currently in Germany, a uh, national team, there are three Turkish players, but in uh, Turkish national team um, uh, plays eight Turkish men who have been educated in Germany. So, so both countries uh, like football. So, uh, Turkish uh, Turkish national team right now speak German on the field. 
sports activities um, are excellent for foreign language training. Uh, actually, it would be very, very good if uh, small kids w uh, would um, have uh, training, sports trainings in a foreign language so that a coach would be from a foreign language because they would learn very quickly. Now, when I watch Latvian games with our um, neighboring countries, Vatsvagars knows Lithuanian language as well as Latvian language. At least two of Latvian players speak Estonian. So from all the Latvian basketball players who have been to, uh, who, who um, th those who um, never wanted to learn languages, now they speak foreign languages because of uh, the countries they have played the game in. So it has been proven that sports games help for the integrity greatly as there is a constant need for communication during the game. It is quite difficult to teach a refugee children sport about which they haven't heard anything at all, like hockey, <laughs> for example, uh, like the, the sports uh, that we could uh, teach them. But what Swedish say that um, two-thirds of the team should be locals and one-third should be uh, foreigners. And that one third of foreigners, they should each be from different countries so that all of them communicate in Latvian. Because if there would be three Syrians, uh, they would speak, uh, uh, speak in their language and they wouldn't even try to learn something new. Why am I telling you all of this? I'm telling you all of this because this event that Europe offers us, which is which has created refugee crisis, all of us have uh, uh, need to think how we will provide Latvian kids with uh, sports activities. Um, it has been very long introduction, but what I would like to um, tell uh, for for the Ministry of Education civil servants that uh, each week kids should have three to five sport lessons and actually one hour per day, one lesson per day of sports should be obligatory because there are no other integrity options for us. So I will talk about uh, ki uh, kids in sport as um, an overall term. Five to seven years old kid uh, we want them to start um, uh, do sports as early as possible. But what kind of sport to choose so that this uh, kid could be active for all his life and be happy? In uh, Riga Stradinch University Physics and Mathematics Cathedral, uh, students wanted to make uh, research which would be the best sports so that you could become an Olympic athlete and win Olympic medal. So we talked about team sports. The greatest opportunities in the team sports, and it's actually quite big a chance, is for female handball or volleyball teams. So uh, Mr. Sasks, if you have, uh, if you want to build an Olympic team, it's enough with Liepaja to build a female handball team which is competitive in the world championships. That's what Iceland did. They have 320,000 inhabitants and in the, Olymp uh, in the Olympic Games in men handball they have won medals. And those are the, those are the sport types of sports where you don't need a uh, very, very specific body but you need communicative skills, physical, um, uh, be physically fit, and that's enough, and leadership skills, and that's enough. And also, I had a look at floorball, but we don't think that floorball will ever, ever be in Olympic Games, the same as orienting games. But if we talk about individual sports, excluding bobsled, skeleton, and lunge, um, 
um, rowing and equestrian sport, mainly for women, uh, would have the greatest chance of getting uh, the Olympic medals. There may be other criteria for choosing the type of sports. Is this sport on TV and is it described by all national newspapers? Is it an Olympic sport which receives about twice the public funding? Does the sport have powerful national federation who care about the athletes? Are there appropriate sports facilities and coaches prepared? And does the sport have popularity in the grassroots? And whether high-class athletes are invited to market the sports, clothing, and footwear. Uh, um, all kinds of gadgets, sports gadgets. Uh, if we if we don't have grassroots support, it won't be successful sport. So modern understanding of sport, it means lifelong tournament. The main in sports is to compete with people of similar training and physiological activities. Children must compete with children, athletes with athletes, and veterans with veterans. I'm happy that Mr. Fogel has um, had uh, good results in t uh, uh, along, um, throughout 20 years. But we cannot compete. Uh, with people who have very good um, sports bikes. But at least I competed with you and I lost. <laughs> so in order to achieve the aim of sports uh, to improve health, uh, a person must uh, train cardiovascular system. Actually, Professor Erglis will talk about that a bit later. I won't uh, spend much time on that. But in order to improve the cardiovascular system, it is important to involve a significant amount of skeletal muscle during practicing. So uh, movements that involve less than one-sixth of the whole body skeletal muscle are not beneficial. So um, board, hockey, or or table tennis. It, it's good if you move a lot, but actually if the sport uh, does not involve one-sixth of all the muscles, it won't improve cardiovascular system. So we have a problem because some of the basketball players don't move more than one sixth of their muscles, and I don't understand that. Why? Why don't they have like overall physical exercises? They jump good and and they they play with the ball very good, but uh, they need to improve abdominal part, thoracic part. Um, so they need to put emphasis on get uh, getting those parts of body better. So. So, most muscles are involved in academic rowing. It's 85%. Right from the first day of training, you need to exclude routine. It's the assumption that the practice makes perfect. It's wrong, but you have to think all the time how to make trainings diverse and improve the movement, technique, and shape. I always try to tell my colleagues that there shall be no training without sweat and there is no training without anaerobic load. And it uh, relates to sports lessons at school as well. If someone tries to tell me that uh, at school sports lessons nobody is sweating, that's not a sports lesson. That's a walk, a stroll. That's, that's nothing related to sport. Movements, uh, activities must be dynamic, and you have to reach an aerobic level, which is 0.7 times 20, uh, um, so 0, 0.7 times 220 minus age. So at age of 16, it should be 142 uh, beats per minute, and at um, age of 40, 126 beats per minute. So we have to practice um, and, and um, specific training has to be carried out for the uh, thoracic and abdominal part. So you have to increase the, the time of, um, 
of practice uh, and you need to have practice at least five times a week and the first condition of the training is that diversity of the intensity so imagine that weightlifter would strive to lift weights for 10 hours. Uh, he would end up in the hospital. But if he lifts the weights for two hours and six to eight hours, do different active physical or recreational exercise, he can become the Olympic um, athlete. Warm-up and stretching are essential components of sports. It is even more important for the elderly than youth. Gymnastics at the beginning or warm-up at the beginning of the training or tournament and stretching at the end um, are an integral part of the sport. Without stretching, there is no sport. Public attitudes uh, is very t uh, positive towards big sport, uh, which is sponsored by big sports business, beer, and advertising. but. But uh, in Latvia, uh, we have this opinion that a patient is a patient lying on the bed, and it hasn't changed significantly over the last 20 years. And it's very, uh, but, but you have to understand that you have to start moving um, as fast as possible if you're ill. So there are 10 things that each sportsman need to know. Breathe, drink, eat, warm up and stretch properly. Uh, stretch after the training to develop athletes thinking, rest appropriate clothing, develop training program and follow it and check on own well-being and state of health. There's no sportsman without a coach. There is no competition without a coach. A lot of people think they know all, but it's very important in um, in, uh, to know for elderly people who have done sports in youth and now when we are older uh, we think that we know what kinds of drinks to drink, what kinds of uh, hormones to uh, eat.